gonna apply a crackle technique over this black substrate. And we are using Mod Podge. You can always do this with your kids' white Elmer's glue. Any of these like fast drying white glues work great. The trick is you have to get this down good and fast and you want a pretty liberal amount. Don't feel like you have to go too thin. You want it to be a pretty good amount. So I'm just kind of going over this and I've, this is a really junky brush. So I've got a few bristles that have kind of come off in there, but you just want to lay this down real quick. And then before it has a chance to dry, you're going to slap on your top coat color. Now the top coat color, it's really important that you not go back and forth over the layer of this Mod Podge. Ideally, you really want this to be kind of like a one stroke type of situation um, with your top coat color. So like I said, I just wanted to kind of go over it. I'm not scrubbing back and forth. I've got some paint on my brush. It makes it about midway and then I'm coming back with the other side of the brush the other way. And I'm gonna go ahead and start heat setting this with my heat tool. Okay, so we're gonna set this piece aside to dry and finish its crackling. And if you notice that going in the one direction with the glue gave me a largely kind of like old wood straight up and down crackle. You have a few crackles in here that are already starting that are not necessarily straight up and down, but it's still insanely interesting, which is the whole objective of this piece. I wanted this to look like a really old piece of wood found in your grandmother's barn, and it's just ready to be made into something beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to our second one. Okay, so I'm back. It's largely dry. There are still a few spots that are kind of moist, but I'm gonna take the um, opportunity to sand and kind of rough those up even more on purpose. So I'm just gonna take my sander. I'm just gonna kind of dust it off, reassess. That's legit old looking, old and fabulous. Okay, this is exactly what I'm going for. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the other one is a little drier. That was the second one I did. And then I'm gonna sand that one as well. So the next step in our process is going to be using the new IOD Paint Inlay Chateau. It's my absolute favorite inlay in the entire world. And I feel like I say that every single time they come up with a new one, but they just keep coming up with new ones that are awesome. This one though, I swear, it makes me feel like I'm walking into some beautiful provincial home in France and you know, it's just decked out with wonderful hand-painted walls that are chippy and wonderful. And one of the things that I absolutely adore about this transfer is they gave us chippy paint to show up so we didn't even have to worry about adding distressing to our pieces. Now, keep in mind, I already did that as my background. I knew I was gonna do that, but like if you wanted to just put this on plain white or plain whatever, you're still gonna see all those wonderful chippy bits, which I think is genius. I've got two pieces here. It's a set of eight, and I plan to use this a few times, obviously. So I'm trying to stretch out how and where I'm gonna use this particular inlay. And of course, I wanna to try to be as careful as possible because I wanna to try to use this again. Yeah, the thing is, is if I'm gonna use those little pearly bits, I have to think about how they're gonna tie in with the opposite side. So that's the other thing too, is you can always cut things out that you don't think you're gonna need. And I hate to waste any of this beautiful inlay. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off this portion and I'll do the same thing with the opposite one. So what if I approach this as these pretty little flowers joining here, and then I don't even worry about the bead elements. They're just gonna be sort of decorative, sort of going off onto the sides. I kind of like that. I mean, you know, it sort of takes the whole stress out of it. And of course, you know that you have that quarter inch seam that you should technically trim off. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna kind of roll with it. Just sort of lining this up. I'm gonna trim off 
this extra swag. But don't throw it away. <laughs> you might be able to use it again on something. All right, so I made this little guide a little bit um, a few weeks back. And I wanted everybody to kind of have an idea of all of the different mediums that you can actually put this stuff in. And when I say this stuff, I mean the paint inlays. So I am going to use Liquitex Matte Gel for this particular purpose. I want to be able to see the color behind it. I want a really crisp inlay as much as possible. So that is what I'm going to go with. But keep in mind, I've used other stuff, you know, Sweet Pickens Top Coat is clear. White gesso um, obviously is white. Clear gesso could potentially have worked here. I could potentially use um, gloss varnish, but I'm just gonna go with the Liquitex Matte Gel. I think it's gonna be the best fit for this purpose. Plus, it's really thick, so you know it's kind of nice. It's not drying up super, super fast, which is really handy. And I have my squirt bottle and my moisten sponge handy and I'm also going to tape down just a smidge of this so that I have a little bit of control over like lifting and picking back up again sort of thing. All right, here we go. You gotta love the IOD, IOD um, transfer sticks. Because I swear it has become like one of my favorite little random tools. Paint stir, burnishing tool. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting this good and stuck. Spritz it with water. I'm going to go ahead with my wet sponge. It's moist, but not like soaking wet, okay? So I'm just kind of going over that. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with the heat tool. Okay, so we're going to come in with our spray bottle. I'm just going to pull off that tape. Also got my wet sponge. I'm just gonna gently, 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 gently pull back. Okay, so that came off beautifully, all in one piece. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this flat on my floor so it has a chance to dry flat again. Really, the absolute magic touch is the squirt bottle and a rag that's been wet or, um, like I said, a wet sponge. And what I do is I basically just wet the entire sponge, wring it out so it's moist, but not sopping wet. I'm gonna dry this sucker and then we're gonna go ahead and set it with the Spectrafix. Okay, so I went ahead and dried it all up, just in case I'm gonna give it a gentle shake. And I'm gonna do just one of these at a time. Considering that like, I wanna see what I'm doing, I'm holding it at a slight angle so I can see exactly where it's hitting. Next one. It's, so commit to the pump. Don't do short little spurts. Follow through all the way down with your pump on the bottle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let these two pieces dry and we'll move on to our second portion of it. We just finished using the new Paint Inlay Chateau. Now we're going to use the um, Whispering Willow and this is mine. So I'm super excited because I finally get to share all of these little yummy creatures that I've been making with all of you guys. So um, I'm gonna do birds because this piece is going to um, kind of accordion up and slide into a large bird cage. So what I wanted this to look like was a provincial bird cage that had an old fashioned like wallpaper looking background. And then I'm gonna stamp the IOD branches stamp on this. 
to give me a couple of branches so that my birds have something to sit on inside the bird cage. We are going to decide where the branches are gonna go. And I'm sort of feeling like, you know, why mess with a perfectly good background? So I'm just gonna kind of go where I don't have a whole lot of designs so that I'm not having to compete so much for that. But then I also have to keep in mind that my bird has to show up really well too. So I think what I'm gonna do is do this branch here. Once that branch is in place, I'm gonna perch my wren right there. Then for this other one, this will kind of drape across and this little chickadee that is in sort of mid flight has somewhere to perch on when he actually lands on his little branch. All right, so we have our branch on our cling mount. We're gonna go ahead and ink this up. We're gonna heat set this. And then we're gonna come in with something like a nice brown, probably like raw umber or burnt umber is really good. And I'm just gonna take a small brush and paint in my branch. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some of my top coat here. All right, so our top coat has had a chance to dry. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay down our first bird. And not only am I trying to be conscientious of like finding a spot for him to fit nicely in, I'm also trying to make sure his little feet line up with the branch so that they're kind of an appropriate position. Looks a bit more natural. Okay, so he's in flight, he's coming in but we also wanna capture the really, really pretty wingspan of him without it being too crazy. It's kind of perfect. He's in flight and he's coming in, he's gonna land on the branch and it's perfect. I'll kind of keep that stroke going throughout the entire thing so I don't have any funky dry lines. So we're going to let this guy go ahead and dry 100% and then what I'm going to do is pull out some hinges and screw them to the back of this so that I can go ahead and um, put it in my birdcage. Okay so I have my hinges and I'm just making a spot in the center of each of these holes so I know where to stab my awl. And it's always a really good idea to start a hole off for yourself with an awl. Because I swear, it's like as soon as you stick that little screw in, it just wants to go all over the place. So just start yourself off with a tiny little hole for the screw to sit into. And you'll be much happier that you did. 